We're going to just have our reading now, and then Martin's going to speak. So, The reading is Isaiah 43. So if you want to find that in your Bibles or your phone like me, if you're using your app. And we're beginning at verse 1. So Isaiah 43, title, Israel's Only Saviour. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Kirsch and Seba in your stead since you are precious and honoured in my sight and because I love you. I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of their gods were told this and proclaim to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right, so that others may hear and say, It is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he, before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed, I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am am the Lord your God, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and refreshments together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. This is the word of the Lord.
Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you. Um, we are. It's something exciting, isn't it, about a new year and a new start and the new opportunities uh, that open up for us. And hopefully that new season, a new start, is going to come up on the screen as well just to help us as we think about it. Um, I believe that God has been taking the nations and taking us through a period of sifting where everything that we've often trusted in has been shaken. We've seen our financial institutions shaken over the last few years. Our trust in our politicians and whether they're going to tell us the truth and keep their promises is being shaken. Even our trust, maybe that our doctor can solve all the issues, is being shaken. There are many things that we have put our trust in. And those things, the Lord Almighty has been shaken in order that we might turn to him. That we might trust in him, that we might depend on him and not on the things that we depend on instead. I believe we've been going through a season where... Uh, we're not just going through a pandemic, but I think we are now in an epidemic of fear. We're in a season where many are gripped in fear at this time. It is, is that me or? Oh, it's not. That's <laughs> good. Was that telling me to stop already? I can't be that quick. <laughs> Fantastic. And we are in this, I mean, do you feel it? I was in B&M this week, you know, going and, and somebody invaded my personal space. Someone went in for the Wrigley's chewing gum very close to the counter right beside me. I know it was on special. I know it was a bargain, but they came into my personal space. They came within a meter of me. And I, I felt my fear levels go up. Someone coughed behind a mask near me. Do you get that moment where they, they cough? <laughs> Someone coughed in the same room as me. Quite recently, we were across a table and they coughed. And yeah, and they haven't got their mask on now and I'm, I'm fearful. My fear levels go up. And it is, you know, I know strong and faithful members of churches who are living in fear and are gripped by it. Actually, it's almost taken hold of them that they're too fearful to come back. And that fear level has got, I think, too high. Look, even my cat, that there's the fear. But look, even my cat's fearful. <laughs> How do we move in this new season from fear to favor? I believe that's the flow of this passage. You'll see in Isaiah 43 that God wants us to move from fear to favor. He wants us to, for our fear to be driven out by his perfect and unfailing love, for our lives to be so solidly rooted on his unfailing promises and his life-giving word that we would live with radiant joy, with radiant hope, would live with fearless faith, in our generation. And it's that that will witness and attract a generation, will draw a generation, a fearless, courageous faith in Christ. Now, I'm not saying don't be careful. I'm not saying don't be wise. I am saying don't take unnecessary risks. Don't hear me wrong. But we are not called as the people of God to live in fear. His perfect love drives out fear. We should be the most fearless people. For us to live is Christ. To die is glorious gain, isn't it? So why should we live in fear? Glorious gain. Yvonne is now dancing in the heavenly. She is in safely in paradise. She has experienced such freedom and joy that I cannot express it. We can't describe it. In the place with no more pain, no more suffering, with her resurrection body. She was looking forward to it. It's now hers. And I want it. I'm jealous of her. For us to live is Christ. We, to die is glorious, joyful gain. And our world around us, 
almost wants to conform us into his mind. We say, we can't really have that hope too much, can we? We have a radiant hope. A joy-filled hope, and we need to live in it. Do you know, Ruth from Azalea, this week I was in a united prayer meeting with a number of church leaders across uh, Luton, and she was urging us to, to love like Christ. It was full, her talk of, of just the inspiring, unconditional love of Christ that is being shown through the work of Azalea, is being sh throw, shown through the work of his people. And she called us, she said, do you know, she just threw it out as a line, but it stayed with me all week. She said, I went to an amphitheater in France, and she said it was there as Christians, this word here for witnesses, just so you just think, we all want to be a witness. And who wants to be a witness for Christ here? Okay, I just want to warn you, the word means martyros, which means martyr from the same word, okay? You're not so keen on the idea now, are you? Okay, I'm not so keen on the idea. But as the people of God, as our brothers and sisters were thrown into the amphitheater in France and laid down their lives for Christ, their fearless faith is what sparked a revival in France. The people in those amphitheaters who'd thrown brothers and sisters into that amphitheater, she said it was their faith and courage and hope in the face of even that that sparked conviction of sin. People wept in the arena over what they were doing under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and a revival was sparked in that community. We're called to a fearless faith. How can we grow in that kind of joy and fearless faith that has held and is holding brothers and sisters in Christ across the nations and around the nations right now who are persecuted for the name of Christ? How do we grow in it? How do we move from fear to favor in 2022? How do we move from fear to fresh fruitfulness? in this year how do we move into a year of the lord's favor i want that we're in a year of jubilee and jesus said i came to bring a year of the lord's favor we're going to look into this more what would it be to move into a year of the lord's favor do you know that lady came up to me who doesn't normally prophesy and she said to me a few weeks before we got called to come here to St. Hugh's and she laid her hand on me and she said, I believe God is going to lead you into seven years of God's favor. But there's going to be, it's going to hurt. And there's going to be a time of crushing, and it's going to be not easy, but the Lord is bringing you into a time of, of favor. Now, I want that. That's not easy. But we're going to see in this passage the pathway to favor and to fruitfulness. Now, do we want to go down this path? For the people of God, they've been through a period of deep disappointment and discouragement. The people of God had gone through loss, they'd gone through heartache, they were refugees and exiles in a foreign land. As these words that we've read today were prophesied to them, were spoken to them. Why were the people of God in exile? Well, we see it, don't we, in chapter 42. Which of you will listen to this? Who handed Jacob, who handed the people of, uh, over, the people of God over to become loot and Israel to the plunderers? Was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned? So that he poured out his righteous burning anger upon us. You see, the people of God, they had drifted away from God's word and his ways. They drifted away from their first love of the Lord. They'd blended into the culture around them. They'd taken on board the, 
the gods of the Canaanites and they'd let that soften their faith, diminish their faith, and it caused them to walk away from God's word and his ways. And bit by bit, they'd been sucked in by the world, sucked in by the culture and the idolatry around them, and they'd been drawn into its ways. And who had handed them over? It was the Lord, because of their wrongdoing, because of their sin. It says they would not follow his ways. We would not obey God's laws. If we want to move into a new season and move from fear to favor, from disappointment to favor and fruitfulness, it will always start with a season of refining, a season of repentance, a season of allowing the Lord to come and cleanse and purify from our hearts the things that need to be uprooted and changed. We know that verse well. If my people called by my name, God's called us, called you, and summoned you by name. You're a people. We are a people. Called and summoned by name. This is what we need to do. We need to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves under God's almighty hand. You know, I know some people through January who are fasting and praying every day to say, Lord, purify me and prepare me, refine me and break me in this new year, in this new season. Humble me under your hand. Work in me more deeply. Cleanse me and transform me. If we will turn from our wicked ways, if we'll turn in repentance, God will come and heal our land. You see, our politicians won't tell us this. <laughs> we need our politicians to repent, don't we? Repent of their lies. Repent of the promises they've made that they break. You know, it's like Animal Farm, I thought this week, isn't it? We've got pigs in the farm house. Feasting, giving rules to others but not keeping themselves. It is an injustice, a deep, deep injustice. And our leaders, we need to pray for a purifying of our leaders. But that purifying also comes firstly to us. Lord, make us a people who keep our promises. Who keep our promises. Purify my heart that I might be faithful as you are faithful. It always starts with us. And there has not been maybe enough of a call from the church leadership to say, let us go down this path to humble ourselves, to repent, to say, see, the ills in our nation start with us as the people of God. They start with us. And the good news, as we allow God to start with us, purify us, refine us in the fire, what overflows, overflows to our community and overflows to our nation. So as we start this new year, the first thing I've been thinking of is how firm are our foundations? Are we living with one foot in the world and another foot in in his word? Are we living with one foot in the world, but half a foot in the church? You see, and that's why we're often wobbly as Christians, because we've got one foot on solid rock, and the other foot is on sinking sand. And yet we've been taken in to say, actually, we need to sort of believe this stuff and think this stuff, but actually we need to depend fully on God the foundation of God's word and his ways. And we need to check, are we in? Are we on solid ground? Are we trusting fully in the unfailing promises of Almighty God? You see, this is sinking sand. What the world offers. What the idols of our culture offer. You know, the idol of our day 
of mammon and greed, you know, we so easily drift into it. I remember when I had to give up my gold Amex card and my good salary and the company car. Those were a bit tough coming into ministry, but nothing. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd forgotten I had an Yves Saint Laurent suit. I'd, I found that so surprising how much my Yves Saint Laurent suit in marketing had got a hold of my heart. And the Lord said, no, trust in me. I'm Jehovah Jireh. I will provide for you. I call you. I've summoned you. I've ordained you for this. Let's give up the greed. Let's give up the worship of money. There are things in this new season we need to say, Lord, I'm not going to trust in that anymore. I'm going to trust in you. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. How firm are your foundations? Let's come back to the Lord. Let's come back to his word and his ways. He is our rock. He's our refuge. He is our firm foundation. In this time of shaking and uncertainty, let's put down, and we're going to need to put down, firm foundations. Christ as our cornerstone. His word. God will always deliver on his promises. He has delivered on his promises, and he will. Every word in this book will come to fulfillment. And we need to trust the Lord. I mean, these promises here, that streams would flow in the Negev, these promises that the blind would see and the deaf would hear, they have come to fulfillment in Christ, and they keep coming into fulfillment as people witness to the name of the Lord Jesus in the power of his Spirit. And we need to press into those promises and stand on those unfailing promises. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Verse 1. This is what the Lord says to Israel, but says to you as the people of God. Verse 1. I created you. I formed you in your mother's womb. I knitted you together in body and soul. Our women are discovering again and rejoicing in and dancing in and celebrating that we are fearfully and beautifully and wonderfully made. Do you believe it? Let that in. Let it in. It'll move you from fear to favor. It'll move us from fear to favor. As Peter spoke two weeks ago, it's by grace We've been recreated. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. By God's amazing grace, God says you are a beautiful work of art. Do you believe that you are a beautiful work of art? By God's amazing grace, the more we receive it, the more we believe it, the more we let it anchor us and hold us the more we'll move from fear to favor. Do you see verse 7? I called you by name. I created you for my glory. What a declaration. Let's let it in. You are loved. You were created in Christ Jesus for the good works, for the new things that God has for you to do in the name of Jesus this year. He created you for it. He's destined you for it. Let's receive it. And then verse 2, the Lord says, I am with you. The Lord Almighty is with us. For some of, this, for some of us this year, there have been times when we've felt like the water has been rising right up to our necks and we feel like we're just going to sink out of sight. And the Lord says, even though the waters rise, do not fear, for I, the Lord Almighty, is with you. Maybe the financial stress in this month is going up for you. And the health issues and struggles are huge and big. It can feel like that at times, isn't it? Where the water just seems to be coming right up to our necks and we're saying, Lord, help me. 
here we're told that the one who provided manna for his people in the desert, who split open the rock in the wilderness and provided water to refresh his people, he is with you. He is for you. He has not changed. He has not changed and he is with you. Verse 5 says, do not be afraid. The Lord Almighty is with you in the challenges. He's with you in the storm. He'll even walk with you through the fire. He is there with us to hold us. Let's keep walking in his presence. Let's keep trusting that he, the one who split open the Red Sea and brought his people through from slavery to freedom, is with us. This week, as we were reading, we were reading of the people of God going through the Jordan into the promised land. And I love the fact that the leaders halfway through the river are said, pick up 12 stones. I think that's so cool. I'm going to go and visit the River Jordan this year. We hope. Lord willing. But they picked up 12 stones and they placed them there as a declaration and a reminder that the Lord that we worship is the one who split open the Jordan too and brought his people out of the wandering and the wilderness, brought them through into the promised land. That's the God who is with you, who is for you. We need to check that our foundations are firm in readiness for this new season. And we need to check. Well, this was the other image that the Lord gave me, was of the Lord rebuilding the walls, rebuilding us as the people of God. Every wall needs that fresh, firm foundation. Christ is our cornerstone. The foundation is secure and solid in his word. And what the picture I had was of each of us being these beautifully different and diverse stones being pulled together, being knitted together under the Lord's hand into this wall. God's in the process of rebuilding us. We are living stones. We're living stones chosen and precious and loved by God and God is knitting us together calling us together but as I saw that picture I was reminded that as they rebuilt the walls that the stones many of them had been through the fire before God could rebuild before the people were called to rebuild the walls the stones had been through the fire They've been through the fire of exile. They've been through the fire of disappointment and discouragement. They've been through the fire. And in that place, they were refined and prepared for this next season. See, it's in the fire that faith is strengthened. It's in the fire that we are cleansed and purified. It's in the fire that we are readied and prepared. Don't be afraid by the fire. Don't be afraid if you're going through a season where it feels very hard and your faith is being challenged. For it is often in the fire that that's where it is purified and strengthened and deepened. I have often seen this in my own life that God takes us through the fire. He walks through it with us but it is there we are purified and transformed. One of my prayer partners had a word for me this week and he said, I saw this beautiful, fruitful bunch of grapes and I said, yes, Lord, I want favor. I want fruitfulness in this year. I received the first bit of it with joy. And then he said, it's in the crushing that new wine is going to come. And I said, Lord, I'm not, I don't want that bit. I'm not so sure about that bit. I've had enough of that bit over the last 20 years. But then I thought, actually, I want the new wine. I want the favor. I want the fruitfulness. Actually, am I prepared, Lord, take me through the fire to purify any dross out of my heart, 
take me through any crushing that I may, that the new wine might flow in this place and from my life more. Scriptures say of this, doesn't it? In 1 Peter, your faith, even of greater worth than gold, which is refined by fire, that it might be proved genuine and re may result in praise and glory and honor to Jesus Christ when he comes. God calls us to the fire. He calls us to the fire and he says, this ground is holy. Come and allow me to purify you and transform you and refine your faith. Don't be frightened of the fire. Be frightened of the Lord. But let's come to that holy ground and say, Lord, purify me and transform me for this new season. It is in the fire that we are purified and prepared. It's in the crushing that the new wine flows. It's in the crushing that the aroma of Christ will fill this community and others will be drawn to him. Are you up for that? You see, this is the pathway. Verse 1 starts, do not be afraid. I have chosen you. I've summoned you by name. He loves you. He loves us. And if we want his hand of favor to be upon us, then through the blood of Christ, we can forget the past. It is healed. It's forgotten. It's forgiven. And we can walk into the new things. And the reality of these verses is God has not changed. He is the God who brought his people out of slavery in Egypt. He's the God who delivered and fed them in the desert. He is the Lord Almighty who has provided and provided. And he is the Lord who has got new things for us in this season. Do we want them? Verse 8, if we move from fear to favor, we will see the blind being given sight. We will see the deaf hearing. We'll see the lame leaping for joy. We'll see those in bondage being brought to freedom. And we are, verse 10, his witnesses. I love the flow in verse 10. God reveals, God rescues, and then he calls us to proclaim. He's revealed to you his grace and goodness. He's called you by name. He loves you. He's rescued you for a divine purpose. And he now calls us to proclaim his goodness and his grace this year. As you go to your place of work, as we've been prayer walking the streets, as we go to our families, we carry the divine presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is with you. Let's carry his presence. Let's be his witnesses.